For 40 years, one machine was considered a nearly indispensable tool for buying shoes that fit. From the 1920s through the 1950s, no top flight shoe store was complete without the wondrous shoe fitting fluoroscope. In 1895, German scientist Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen discovered a new form of energy he named the X-ray. Visible light cannot pass through most human tissue, but X-rays, which emanate from radioactive substances, operate on a wavelength that penetrates denser material, including human skin. Even denser tissue, like human bone, will block the ray and cast a dark shadow on a photographic plate. In the U.S., Thomas Edison immediately saw the significance of the X-ray and put his lab to work developing its potential. The Edison team invented a new device, the fluoroscope, that allowed X-ray images to be imprinted on phosphorescent screens and viewed in real time. Edison lab assistant Clarence Daly paid a gruesome price for the advancing technology. Falling prey to radiation exposure, he lost both arms to malignant ulceration before dying an excruciating death. And he was not alone. During World War I, a Boston doctor realized he could see more patients by using Edison's fluoroscope to examine veterans' feet without removing their boots. The idea caught on. And by the 1920s, shoe-fitting fluoroscopes were a hugely successful sales gimmick. In the 1920s, the sales pitch was, it's good for your health because ill-fitting shoes can endanger your child's health. In the 1930s, with the Depression, the sales pitch changed. They started talking about, well, a pair of shoes that's well-fitting also will wear longer so you don't have to buy as many pairs of shoes. The advertising was extremely flexible. It fit the period the same way the shoes were supposed to fit the child. Year after year, shoe salesmen irradiated their customers and themselves on a regular basis. When shoe store salesmen used these devices, they weren't paying any attention to the dangers. They would move them around like a big piece of equipment, like you'd move a radio or move a uh, television set. Careful, but not too careful. Things got jostled, things got damaged, shielding got shifted. So the foot that you're putting, or the feet, if you're young enough, that you're putting in there, not the only thing being irradiated. In fact, it's mom who's looking in one portal, it's the salesman looking in the other portal, the child is up on the little podium looking in, all of them are being irradiated all over. The KVP X-ray tube used three to eight milliamps, and in the continuous 20-second mode, was a formidable health hazard. Most scopes produced 7 to 14 rem of radiation to the feet for a 20-second exposure. Rem is the older system of measuring radiation. The American Standards Association in the 1950s recommended an exposure of not more than 2 rem for a 5-second period. Today, the safety threshold is about 1 1,000th of this number. In addition to the radiation to the feet, scatter radiation all around the machine was also significant often measured at one-tenth rem at a distance of 10 feet. Finally, in 1949, studies published in the New England Journal of Medicine confirmed what many had long suspected. The machines produced enough radiation to have caused untold numbers of deformities, infertilities, and deadly cancers. Here was a technological application that came with high risk and absolutely no reward. The shoe fluoroscope was a gimmick in a lot of ways. It is true, you could get a picture of the foot inside the shoe that you probably couldn't get otherwise, but it really didn't matter. Good, careful measurements and careful fitting of a shoe by a skilled shoe store salesman would have given you the same result. Eventually, regulations on fluoroscope usage were imposed by most states. By 1970, almost all states had banned their use. In 1981, the last shoe store fluoroscope found in an old department store in Madison, West Virginia, had its plug pulled. Radiation pioneers who gave their lives to their work were called martyrs to science. Those who sacrificed their lives and their good health to the shoe-fitting fluoroscope might best be known as martyrs to commerce. <laughs> 